Thanks very much for that presentation, Rosie. I mean, we, we often, after a keynote, we would take uh, Q&A, but we decided today that perhaps we would try and dive into the questions that, and the challenges that Rosie raised uh, in a bit more detail um, via um, some discussions in breakout rooms. Um, so for the next, uh, so this, this is relatively short session of, of discussion. Uh, so we have this in the schedule for 45 minutes. So we'll try and put you into some, or we'll find you into some breakout uh, rooms and then spend some time in the breakout rooms and then um, come back and have a discussion or, or have some report back on what you've, what you've seen. Uh, so perhaps we could have the, the next slide. Um, okay, yeah, so, so actually that's just summarizing what I'm saying. Um, so the, the idea is to tr try and progress some of those challenges with some, some more concrete ideas of, of um, sort of reach out to uh, the community of people who are interested in um, uh, podcasts and recommendation of podcasts and getting people in uh, to access podcasts which they find useful. Um, and then uh, the third slide. It was going so well and we lost the slide presentation somehow there. Uh, yeah, so so this is this is just um, a fleshing out uh, the topics that Rosie um, was talking about a bit. So recommending the tale, uh, so the fair, fairness of making podcasts available to people, um, the idea that you can do everything with collaborative filtering, particularly when you've got either new content or you've got sort of niche areas where you haven't got large numbers of users where you can reliably suggest things, but also um, the fact that um, the diversity can be lost if you if you just pop, pop, uh, focus on popularity um, and then look use of audio features uh, so stepping beyond the text transcripts that we might have and the metadata that's provided with a podcast to think about how we might um, determine whether po podcasts should be recommended um, whether then people are more likely to find them interesting what sorts of features um, you know can we uh, find um, uh, relationships between the features that appear in or in podcasts um, and the types of things that uh, individual users might like to find you uh, find interesting, and then um, a, the topic of explanation, uh, which goes a lot beyond what I think people would often think of in terms of snippet summaries that you might get out of a search engine. Um, as Rosie was emphasising, um, listening to a podcast is a big investment for people, so they need. Uh, we need to be able to uh, guide them reliably to find good podcasts or podcasts that they're going to find interesting that's going to be worth their investment of time. Um, so people need to know what's being recommended to them, why it's being recommended to them. Uh, can we put together not just uh, text snippets, but can we put together useful audio trailers and things like that? And it's uh, those are just I think topics and ideas that Rosie raised. I mean, I think we can go beyond that in terms of um, what what people might like and what we might provide them with. And then uh, the topic of search. So if you, ha if you haven't actually got the perfect item to recommend, can we search for other things which, um, which might be useful? Um, and then something that um, a lot of the collaboration that between um, that Rosie was mentioning before was focused on and that's evaluating. Uh, so uh, what, what would be the features of a share of a recommendation data set that could be shared between people to to study topics here um, and what are the metrics of success um, you, know, you know we might look at so standard measures of precision and recall but pr probably there are a lot more much greater range of useful and potentially user-based metrics that we could look at there so um, so what we, we need to do at this point is to um, consider now. Uh, okay, I should say I should say something on this. Um, so we need to you need to think about which problem you would like to work on, which was most attractive. Hopefully, you will find at least one of those problems interesting. Um, we were planning to use um, Google, uh, the new Zoom feature of self-select breakout rooms, but we understand that perhaps some people haven't got that available at the moment. Um, and uh, so if, if some rooms become very large, um, now I think some of my co-hosts are going to help manage this. Um, that uh, we need to set up, we need to set up the breakout rooms um, and, then, and then get them breaking out. Um, so welcome back from the breakout rooms. Uh, sorry about the little bit of chaos at the beginning there. Hopefully you found your way to some interesting discussions. Um, 
we know, we know that several people moved around between different uh, different breakout rooms, and that that's just fine. Hopefully, you're able to uh, to listen and contribute to a number of different topics. Um, so at this point, we'd like some short um, uh, reports. So we we asked each um, topic area in each breakout room to hopefully have nominated somebody who can say a few words about what you were uh, you were talking about. Um, and um, probably by the time we've through that, um, this set we'll get to the end of the session. But if there is a little bit of time left at the end, uh, then then maybe we'll have a bit of Q and A. Um, and hopefully, um, if if somebody has made some notes during your uh, discussions, it'd be really great if you could send that on to the chairs. Um, if you're either to send, send, you could send them to to myself and Rosie and Ching Wei, or just one of us. Um, and so we'll try and use those just to uh, help summarize the discussions uh, in, a, in a, an overall report on this workshop that we prepare. Um, so at this point, we could perhaps go through the, the topics that Rosie uh, raised and I'll perhaps take them in reverse order. Um, so, well, reverse order of one of the lists. That's okay. Let's let's go. <laughs> let's go in the nor the um the, the in the order in this list, which wasn't the the order that Rosie had in her in her presentation. Um. So how about people who were looking at recommending the tail, um, with fairness and uh, situations where collaborative filtering, uh, doesn't doesn't um solve your problems in terms of recommending podcasts. Is anyone able to talk about that? Can, uh, unmute yourself um, if um, if you want to talk, please. I was in that room, but I would like to see if anyone else from that room can also talk. I'm going to wait for a minute, for a okay. few seconds to see if you, anyone you didn't, else. You, you didn't have a named person ahead of time. So. Uh, Recommending the tail. I joined a little bit later, so I'm wondering if there was someone assigned. As far as I know, there was no one assigned. Oh, okay. okay. So, 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 <laughs> if you could, if you could uh, summarize a bit, and maybe, uh, maybe somebody else who or um, who is involved, if if there's anything you miss out that's important, then they could they could chip in. Um, so should I go ahead? Yeah. Yes, go ahead, please. Yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. and please add from that room. Uh, the part I was involved with the discussion, there was a question. So it sounded like there is this main problem with a long tail that we need to be uh, kind of assuring about the quality of the content. So that's one part. That's that's a big. Uh, challenge. And after uh, having the quality, the question is that who you should um, recommend this content to, which gets into understanding the contents better and being able to uh, elicit preferences of the users and assign these uh, long tail items to uh, recommend these like long tail items to the users. Uh, there were a, a couple of really interesting uh, experiences uh, that were brought up. Some Someone mentioned that they, they, have, they have seen a, a correlation between um, measuring the coverage of a recommendation and the long-term satisfaction of the users. So it's really interesting. That sounds like if you move away from um, popularity, you're going to actually get uh, more satisfied uh, users as well. This is not clear in every domain. So it was, I think, an interesting point that was brought on, uh, brought up with uh, one of our participants. Uh, the other, uh, I think uh, someone else also mentioned they have been also um, kind of diversifying their content in their podcast recommendation that also has resulted in better engagement and more satisfaction from the users. In terms of how to do that, we talked uh, a little bit about content-based recommendations, like how to use the content of a uh, show to recommend them to the users. These are the parts I remember. So if anyone from that room wants to add, it would be great. Yeah, so if you have anything to add, just unmute yourself and... Uh, and... Uh, 
Yeah, and no, I think that covered quite uh, a lot of what we talked about. Uh, I guess we talked a lot about uh, just the problems of uh, uh, how it's hard to uh, to mm. recommend for the tail. Mm. Um, okay, uh, so we'll move on to the second topic. Uh, so use of audio, so getting beyond just using transcripts and text and metadata uh, for rec for um, recommendation to podcasts. Can anyone um, give us a report on those discussions? Yep, I took notes. Um, talked about a few things. One thing is actually related to the long tail and fairness, uh, you know, talking about uh, autom uh, automatic speech recognition, ASR, and how much of podcast recommendation is going to depend on this, where we sometimes take for granted um, ASR has improved a lot in the recent years, but there are still biases um, and issues with certain, um, you know, segments of, of, of humanity who, um, you know, have, are not uh, the performer that have higher error rates. Um, and so it is still an open area, uh, you know, just ASR for, for podcasts. Uh, we talked a lot about um, audio quality uh, and, you know, the, the production quality that goes into making a podcast and you have everything from like garage um, podcasters to like large funded, you know, podcast companies um, who have large marketing budgets. And so there's an interesting like confounding there of you know, is it, is it the quality of the audio or is it the quality of the show or the, you know, the quality of the, the marketing budget that makes something a popular show or not? Um, but also that there's a, it's not more is better always. Um, with audio quality, I think some people mentioned there's a threshold that at a certain point you can have like a fancy rig and people don't notice, you know, there's, there's not much of a difference beyond a certain point. And so how much is, is enough uh, for audio quality? Uh, and also maybe in some cases, the, like the lower the quality, the, the more attractive it is to certain segments of, of an audience. Um, uh, and this goes back to just like general recommendation or, or personal taste, which is, you know, people do like creativity. They like uniqueness. Um, and listening to someone who has a, a different voice than, you know, than the, the, uh, the majority, um, maybe a podcast with a, you know, a lower audio quality, like production quality, like those could be things that actually draw people into certain shows. Um, we have examples of this, you know, in all media where it's, y y there, there's a large audience for kind of unique um, content. And so it's audio quality is not just a more is better. Um, that is, those are the two big things, I think. Um, lots of challenges, of course, for, mm -hmm. for audio. And I can share the notes. Right, that's great. Um, any, anyone want to add anything else to, to what Ching Wei is reporting? Okay, so um, I guess we can move on. Uh, we, we didn't notice a, a lot of interest or a lot of activity in the, in the explanation topic. And so if anyone wants to report that, we're really interested to hear, but we might move on if, if there is no report on that. No? Okay, so- um, uh, I wanted to yeah. talk about like, something so for okay. podcast so for podcast summarization we can do so like for uh, podcast with higher budgets they already have a trailer uh, to the entire season uh, or a specific uh, in 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 the part of a specific episode they talk about uh, what what has happened and what we will uh, discuss in the specific podcast so instead of a summarization we could allow users to like select the part which is to be later put into as a clip or a, like to recommend users. 
like a short clip uh, from the podcast rather than making a entirely new audio for from by editing from different parts of so sure. and and so that those would be constructed manually yes okay uh, no manually no we just uh, select some specific part from from a podcast like if if a, if they already have like an introduction we could like give like many podcast uh, introductions like uh, so users can specifically select a time interval which is to be made a clip okay okay thanks thanks for that so maybe you move to the next topic which is um use of search with recommendation and podcasts can somebody give us some uh comments on that yeah i have some notes on this group so we were talking about first how search is of an event is uh, a hard problem, not searching of the title or searching all about the host or whatever, but searching about a specific event that may happen and the user may have interest on, on that event, but doesn't know where to find that in the, in the podcast. No? That's something we, we were discussing a bit. And then we were talking about kind of Shazam, but for podcasts. No, if if there there is some initiative for that, or what would be the scenario where someone would need to use a kind of a Shazam for podcasts? So putting uh, um, a phone app that is able to identify the podcast, and 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 then you can play. But it's, it's a different scenario, no? So you are not generally listening in a place where there is a podcast, and you want to identify it. But maybe we want to identify. Um, what the people is talking about and then finding a, a podcast that is similar to that. So we were talking also about the conversational systems that are listening to people, maybe to provide ads also that can be to recommend podcasts. But it's, of course, it's a bit creepy to, to have the conversational system listening to you to recommend podcasts. But maybe if you ask your system specifically for that because you want that, then maybe it's, it's not that clear. That's something we were, we were talking about. Also, we mentioned the need of an open database of podcasts, like Music Brain for music or IMDb for for films. This came from the example that Royce put about the Wall E in Netflix. Now that you don't have that title, but you want to find similar, so there is not such a open database where you have all the episodes, all the shows different and, and the people that is uh, in those shows that, that can be something very interesting for the community. Also, uh, automatic identification of speakers is another thing, like you are listening to some podcast, whatever, and, and you want to get know who is speaking at a certain moment and also have more information about that speaker. So, so. And so that could be interesting. And, and finally, there was this uh, idea of having a thumbnail, a visual thumbnail of a podcast. Like in YouTube, you have the videos, and people made up these thumbnails where you really explain what is in the video in one, in one image or something related to that. But for podcasts, and maybe automatic generation of those thumbnails, thumbnails to for search. And um, yeah, more or less. Those were the topics we and the ideas we were discussing. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, I guess in the interest of time, we need to, to move on. Um, so um, the, the topic of evaluating podcasts or recommendation and um, of, of podcasts, um, could anyone give us uh, yeah. those discussions? Yeah, I took some notes. Um, so there is like two main points. Uh, the first one was a uh, rise by Michael and Francesco that are going to present a paper later. Uh, it was on data availability. Uh, I mean, there is, a, it seems difficult to have a setup uh, and, and, and for academic, more difficult to have a setup of data to make experiment on podcast recommendation. So basically they need to build an internal study if they want to, to do something or ask industry and make a deal uh, to have access to data. 
um, another aspect that was taken account around this data was uh, it's important to have a um, player data like the player of the podcast that will uh, that will provide things uh, to to make some uh, implicit rating and do all the recommender things so that's uh, another aspect on the on the data point uh, and after we talk about more like uh, on the podcast recommendation setup what could be a uh, um, difficult to do for the evaluation. Uh, so the first one was basically to have review at the episode level. Uh, it's kind of different of song or, or movie uh, where close like a TV show, for example. So it's important to have this kind of information at, uh, at an episode and not only uh, as a series. Um, the pandemic period, uh, like the last two years, uh, have, I think, uh, make evolve the consumption of podcast from a, a listener perspective and a creator perspective. Maybe Spotify has some insight on it to share. Uh, there is also the, the, the fact that some podcasts uh, are impacted by the news. So basically the subject uh, that is a talk in a podcast uh, could be a divining topic. Uh, so it's maybe something that you should not put uh, in your evaluation and uh, put aside. Um, the fact that basically on some platform, you don't have exactly the same experience. Uh, for example, uh, in, uh, in YouTube, if you listen to a podcast, you can rate with a thumbs up, thumbs down uh, any, uh, uh, a podcast where on Spotify, you cannot do it. Uh, same thing for the time code features. Uh, on, uh, on YouTube, you can jump on specific uh, part of the podcast and on Spotify, I think it's not possible, but I may be uh, wrong on that. And the last factor was basically uh, the fact that podcasts can be post on multiple platforms. Uh, and basically you can start to listen, for example, uh, on Spotify and after you can continue on YouTube because you want to watch specific uh, aspect of the podcast that need to have uh, the video uh, to, to, to watch. So it's something that you need to take in account in your evaluation. And that's it. Okay, uh, thanks very much for that uh, kind of a succinct uh, review of, of the discussions. Um, so we're now um, at the end of the session. Um, I think in the interests of the program, we, we need to move on. Thanks very much for your discussions. Uh, thanks very much for the report backs. Um, uh, hope you, um, it was interesting to spend some time um, looking at the topics that, uh, that Rosie raised earlier on. Um, so we're now due a short break bef uh, before the presentation of the papers. Um, I would suggest, unless Ching Wei tells me otherwise, that we uh, maybe start back at 10 to the hour rather than uh, in 15 minutes, uh, so, uh, rather than 15 to the hour. So you get a 15 minute break from now to make some coffee, stretch your legs or uh, catch up with anything else you need to catch up with. And we'll, we'll come back um, officially at, um, uh 1640 1650 i'm sorry uh but um obviously you're in your your own local time zone <laughs>